I'm Tara Oracle, and this is the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot. I got this almost a year ago. That's how lazy I am. If you're like, you're not lazy, you produce all this stuff. Well, you don't really know me very well at all. Because, yeah, this was last Halloween when I got this. Anyway, I think so. I think so. Anyway, Jack-O-Lantern Tarot. You know, my bad behavior aside, the box looks great. Well, so, you know, first impressions, the box looks great, except... It's coming out glued. Okay, the box is coming out glued. 78 spooky cards, magical tarot cards. Okay, LS made this. So hopefully it's good. I know that uh, pretty much everybody on the planet has already opened theirs and made a review since it has been a year. But uh, this is my review for the Jack O' Lantern Tarot. Halloween is here once again, and it is time to look at the little white book and to see if the little white book is going to be as bad as it usually is with LS decks. We need to determine this kind of stuff. So let's look at this and see. The little white book is indeed uh, pretty bad. Pretty standard little white book. So different languages and whatnot. You get a couple of sentences, maybe a paragraph on the majors, on the minors. You get a sentence or two. Let's look at the actual cards. Here is the back, which looks great. Non-reversible, but whatever. So the Jack-O-Lantern Tarot by LS. Card quality is... It's okay. I mean, it moves a lot, but it's all right. Uh, let's see. The Fool. That is very cute. I like the rays coming out of the head and whatnot. The dog sort of catching up. And chasing it does look like pretty good LS. Uh, this looks like the same person that does the pre Raphaelite tarot, right? This looks exactly the same, in fact. So I assume this is the same person, um, a deck and guidebook, Juliana Costa. Yeah, this is the person that did the pre Raphaelite tarot. I do like the pre Raphaelite tarot quite a bit. So I am kind of excited to see what they did with this. You do have the same cloud patterns as you had in the pre-Raphaelite tower. I like the outfit. I like all the stuff. You have a little bit of the background being, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the reuse of the clouds in the pre-Raphaelite tarot in this one kind of annoying because the pre-Raphaelite tarot had just this constant reuse of all the clouds, and you kind of see it here as well. So, High Priestess is here. Um, interesting that you have kind of a light... Uh, mixed in here. Uh, you do have the Torah. You do have all of that stuff. The moon. So we're looking for a crescent moon here. I guess that we qualify. I guess. Interesting to say the least. Uh, the Empress over here. We have, again, that's the reuse of all the clouds. That is sort of an interesting, it almost looks like a mouth that's open or what have you. You do have the Venus sign, except a little more of a pumpkin style. You do have the head a pumpkin head resting the foot on there, kind of cute. Uh, the Emperor's interesting. Pumpkins everywhere. It is a Halloween jack-o'-lantern tarot and whatnot. Um, yeah, kind of a reuse of the background in a lot of these cars. You do have kind of the faces over here. Um, looking that, we got the Hierophant with the, instead of the worshipers facing the Hierophant, they're facing each other, almost like a two of cups. Or almost like a lover's aspect, which is kind of interesting. And then we have the literal lovers over here with the um, uh, same background as always. And, yeah, I mean, you have the snake it's curled around. You have sort of the flaming tree and whatnot and all of this stuff. And then we have the chariot over here with all the horses drawn. Two different colors over there instead of the sphinxes. And then the, um, you know, it's kind of looking, sort of the crowns, interesting. Interesting crown design on here. Strength card, kind of a weird looking lion. I like the face and the clouds. I like sort of the aspect of the living tree and whatnot. Almost gives the tree of life. I like the lemuscate being on there. And then the hermit with the, almost like a um, star formation of a skeleton, seems like insinuated star formation of a skeleton kind of cool and we have the wheel with all the symbols around it again heavy heavy reuse of those clouds it's sort of an interesting aspect we do have the book and all the things 
the person here is actually reading the book. It's open. Um, cool. And then the justice card, balancing things out. We have sort of carrying the water on the back almost, but I think it's a sword. Um, not really sure what's going on. We have the sword. The sword is usually vertical, but we've changed that. We're sort of carrying this throughout. And then we have a reuse of some of the background in there. The hanged man with the cross symbolism for the cross legs. I like the sort of the eyes in there. That's sort of interesting at least. And then the death card with the horse not being a pale horse. Interesting. You do have a, a severed head, a dead body in the background. A little bit grim, but uh, yeah, the scythe is there. I like the reuse of the owl constantly. There is a tear of owls coming out. Kind of interesting to see what that has. Temperance card. I like the face within the water flow. That looks really good. And then the devil. I like that as well. That's sort of interesting. The devil has the flaming thing. Weird look at devil and a volcanus, volcanus mountain in the background. Looks like the lava may impact the castle. Um, the tower card, where we're leaping out of it. We do have the lightning hitting it and all the flaming and fire beneath us. The star with the skull on the lid. Interesting, to say the least. The star reflections here. Sort of a happy face within the star. It's kind of cool. And then we have the moon. Okay. Sort of a double skeleton. Sort of a two skeletons meeting. A little two of cups action in there. And the uh, skeletonized wolf and dog. With the uh, crab or the lobster coming out of the sea. The sun riding in. Not a child. Looks more like an adult. And we have the sun, a sort of a Halloween sun. We're riding on the skeleton face, which is kind of cool. And then we have the rebirth reincarnation, which does fit skeletonized bodies. And then the world. Everything is there. All sorts of interesting things. All the usual symbolism, but a little bit of a pumpkinized wreath around the individual. Ace of Cups. Ooh, I like the hand. It's kind of a weird hand. Kind of a skeletonized hand, but it has a glove on it. And then we have the usual dove with all the symbolism. I really like the shading on this. I think the shading is pretty tight on that. And then we have a Two of Cups with a meeting of the minds and what have you. And a meeting of the two people. We have, this, we have the pumpkin in the background and sort of the skeleton in the basic there. Three of Cups with a celebration. I do appreciate that it is Illustrated Miners. It's harder and harder to get Illustrated Miners. The more uh, decks we get, the less Illustrated Miners we seem to have. Skeletonized Hand with that. It looks pretty cool. And then we have the Five of Cups, the disappointment. That's interesting how they're lined up. It's almost like it's disappointing, but it was di it's an organized disappointing. If that kind of makes sense here. I like kind of the theme there. Uh, Six of Cups, the handing off of that with the outfits and the uh, disguises, what have you. We have the Seven of Cups, sort of like a little gnome almost, or a little scarecrow. And they're reproducing all of the cups with the choices and what have you. The Eight of Cups, the disappointment, leaving things again, an owl, a lot of owls in here. And then the Nine of Cups, very pretty, very pretty. I really like this deck. Uh, Ten of Cups looks great as well. Uh, happy home, happy celebration with the ghost in the mixture of the children. Then we have the Page of Cups over here, a sort of a walking through, walking on the pumpkins and what have you. The fish is dead and is skeletonized. And the repeat of this one particular outfit We've seen, what, three, four times now. Knight of Cups, the Mr., or in this case, maybe Ms. Romance. Kind of cool. Again, the cloud formations of the skeletonized face. Queen of Cups, uh, pretty standard. With the owl is back, but in a larger format. Then we have a wild looking throne here with this king. King of Cups, indeed. Okay, Ace of Pentacles. Um, 
interesting, almost like a noose, kind of like a noose there, uh, but it's cut. I mean, doesn't that sort of resemble a noose to you? Uh, interesting that they would use that. I mean, noose is um, kind of politically incorrect right now. A two of cups, a two of, a two of pentacles. Um, uh, okay, we have the C in the background. We're juggling. We have the lamascape. And uh, we're also juggling a pumpkin as well. Uh, three of pentacles, working on getting specifications with things. We got a four of pentacles, hanging on to everything, holding on to what we got. And a five of pentacles. Uh, that's interesting. We have somebody to embrace. The winter cold is still here. The injuries are still here. But we have somebody to embrace. And uh, the journey is not being fulfilled. The journey is not being walked. Six of Pentacles with the gifts, pretty traditional there. Then the Seven of Pentacles working, very organized, almost like an Eight of Pentacles structure, except on the opposite side. We have the outfit and what have you. And the Eight of Pentacles, very pretty. I love the, I love sort of that light purple, the fuchsia kind of color in there, working on that. And we sort of made the inside of a building, which is interesting, instead of just one side with an open section here. That's kind of cool. Nine of Pentacles, the, the sort of the culmination of everything we worked for in the Seven of Pentacles. And the Ten of Pentacles, happy home, happy family, but a more elderly and aged family. The owl is still there. Page of Pentacles. We have a little crow action over there. The Knight of Pentacles. Ooh, I love the I love that dragon. It's almost like that we need to make a dragon tarot out of this. Well, I don't know if that's a I don't know what that is. It looks kind of like a dragon. It looks like a big bug or a dragon, what have you. Uh, if I saw that on the wall, I would uh, definitely call the exterminator. The Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, sort of a uh, sort of a standard kind of thing. King of Pentacles. Same kind of thing here. Uh, owl and the crow and a bull. I mean, might as well. Uh, is the ace of wands. The two, I like sort of a lot of greenery in the wands. You rarely see that. More of a red feel, red tint, red colors. You have a lot of greenery in here. So the two of wands, we're not looking out in the distance. We're looking to the left, which I think is kind of cool. Three of Wands. Now we are looking into the distance. We got a little buttocks pattern there on the pants. And uh, I guess we're looking into the distance there. The owl has returned. The Four of Wands, new home, happy home, happy family. Again, very greenery. Five of Wands with the conflict and the sad face with the facial features kind of formed with the uh, birds, which is kind of interesting. I've never seen a facial feature in a cloud formed by birds. That's kind of wild. Anyway, the Six of Wands, the Lord of Victory over here being cheered on. The people look kind of depressed. They really do. Have sort of the owl aspect in there, but it's sort of on the sleeve or the shoulder. We have a seven of wands, a lot of stepping on pumpkins in this deck, I gotta say. Sort of being defensive, maybe against the owl. That's kind of an interesting aspect. The eight of wands, by the way, I did that in my deck where a bird was attacking them. It's interesting to see that done in somebody else's deck. Eight of wands, a lot of movement, a lot of excess uh, detail. Nine of wands, sort of looking at us a little bit weird. And the 10, uh, we got the page. The page is really sort of leaning in. A lot of activity, a lot of implied motion here. Uh, kind of interesting. And then the Knight of Wands with the uh, sort of holding it up. I like the pyramids in the background. The Queen of Wands, the King of Wands, and finally we get to the Swords. So beautiful deck so far. The Ace of Swords, a lot of detail in the clouds, a lot of detail on that sword. The Two of Swords, the blindfold is present. Uh, again, we have sort of a facial features made by the birds, which I think is interesting. Never seen that in tarot before. If you've ever seen birds make up a facial features, let me know. Three of Swords through the head instead of the heart. The Four of Swords relaxing and kind of in death, I guess, with the, uh, the, with the skeleton. Uh, five of Swords, interesting, sort of a Lord of Defeat. No people that were defeated unless that's a skeleton running off. 
and then the owls are back. Kind of wonder if all the birds are implied to be owls. Six of swords, we have the floating pumpkin and the journey. Seven of swords, the implied owl there, with the sneaking out and holding the sharp end of the sword, not recommended. Uh, I like the uh, frog mouth sort of eating the swords, like sword swallowing. You have an eight of swords with the um, uh, restrictions. I like the pattern here, sort of balancing on that. The owls are back. The nine of swords with the nightmares. The owls are looking over them. And then the ten of swords with the owl's back and the uh, penetration of the back. You don't actually see the penetration of the cloak or anything like that. It's almost like they're behind the person rather than penetrating into their, into their body. Page of swords. We got the knight of swords flying with the pumpkin, which I think is kind of interesting. And then the queen of swords and the king of swords. Interesting deck, I gotta say that. Jack-o'-lantern tarot. <coughs> um, I think that the author that made this, uh, Giuliano, Co Giuliano Costa, uh, also made the pre-Raphaelite tarot. I like the art style. I really love how they do things. I don't like the repeat patterns in the clouds, but overall, I think it's a fantastic. I use a pre-Raphaelite tarot quite a bit, and I can see myself definitely using this quite a bit as well. Let me know what you think about the jack-o'-lantern tarot.